Okay, so this is part four. Um, kicking straight in with these Linden tractors. These are interesting little tractors. We don't see them in the UK. They're quite a high-end Austrian tractor. These are built with a low center of gravity. You can see that they're, they're quite small, but maneuverable as well. These have got four-wheel steer. If we go and look over at the, uh, at the screen here, you can see the sort of scenery these things are working in. Beautiful, hilly, Austrian and Swedish farms um, where they've got some fairly steep terrain to deal with so that's what these are predominantly designed for but they're, they're not a cheap tractor they're a high-end thing. The Roboti um, robot I think this is going to be the future when we see uh, automation in agriculture you can see the uh, power pack on one side and all the controls on the other side um, this is the sort of thing that you'll see. This is just a quick one. You can see the little belt running in the uh, Monosem Precision Coulter. You can see that little belt drive there. And this is the Honeybee stand. So, Honeybee make aftermarket headers, so they're a, a belt uh, header for combines, but they can also be used in on tractor applications. So, if you're swathing, you could use them for whole crop if you want to put whole crop through a forage wagon or a round baler without knocking the heads off and shedding all the corn you know you could you could use one of these um, reciprocating blades quite surprised they left all this open to be honest but um, and then belts at the back the sails pull the crop over the stainless steel bridge at the front I imagine that's got a bit of little steepness on it just to prevent any stones coming up there so you just get crop. Um, but you can see the belt at the back there so that takes the crop into the middle and then you could have that going straight into a combine or if it was on a swathing operation onto the floor. Very sharp. So next up, Pierre, yeah, just looking at this uh, Agrifac sprayer. These things are huge. They're, I think the biggest one's got an 8,000 litre tank on it. Um, huge tyres, 50 inch row crops. At 480, 50s looks pretty cool on those black wheels, doesn't it? So that's the uh, that's the big Agrifac Condor. Um, huge crop sprayer. I've seen one of these with 42 metre booms on it and it's like an aircraft taking off. A little underneath. This is the LaForge stand. You don't see as much of this stuff knocking around anymore because a lot of companies have their OEM front linkages but uh, this system you do see every now and again. This is a, a powered headstock so this you can have, you can see the satellite dome on the top there. So you could have a satellite receiver on it and this is mounted in between a tractor and an implement so the tractor can go on one track and the implement can precisely follow the rows uh, where it's supposed to be. I think a lot of uh, farms are using precise uh, RTK now so you see less of that. This is quite an interesting concept for belly weights so if you're doing a lot of uh, draft work with your tractor you can add this weight so that the pin there goes into that hook and then it just lifts the whole weight up right underneath the middle of the tractor where you need it for um, pulling draft work so semi mounted implements that's a 1700 kilo weight this is the the crone version of the combined powers project so worked with Lemkin on this so they've created this uh, four wheeled automated uh, tractor basically it's a modular system so it's got a chassis and the two I believe they're Carrera axles yeah, one of Farm Machine Award 23 um, this is a front mounted crone mower so I think the idea is that the tractor can run in either direction because there's no cab it doesn't matter um, that's the folding mechanism so that this mower can fold down to be the right width for road transport and you can just see inside there 
there's the, the Lemkin one was all guarded up so you couldn't see inside but there's the chassis and the axle and then it's got uh, powered stabilizers so you, if you're really precise um, operations you can move the linkage side to side like that powered headstock that same sort of concept this is the Gen 5 big pack so some changes on this a lot of the uh, a lot of the side guarding that you can see down there so that opens in two ways it'll open drop down completely like that so you can load it with twine or you can just open the side doors if you want to just have a quick look in if you're working um, not too much change at the front but around on this side you can see the we get underneath the guard here we've got the new VFS um, drive system so that sensor there is going to come into play in the future for automating the baler and tractor performance going forward uh, the AFS system has been increased that's the new clutch for the AFS so uh, automatic fill system so that uh, manages the wad size in the baler that's the uh, the knife section the split in the middle on the crown so they come out one bank either side up on the top there you can just see the new um, fans so that's an improvement on the on the crown and that's uh, a new system that crown have brought out which is an additive system which is all automated as well crown's bale sledge there don't know whether we'll see many of these in the uk uh, it's the it's the new crown gx trailer so it's quite a high spec trailer um, if we just have a quick look underneath here you can see that underneath you've got uh, hydraulic rams mounting on the axle so you've got spring assembly and hydraulic rams so it takes the shock but it also will self level and allow the wheels like one wheel will drop into a rut and then the next wheel will counteract that effect so it'll follow the bumps in, in the fields. It's quite a clever system, particularly when you see it working. It's very impressive. It keeps the trailer very level. Um, inside this machine, it's it's kind of like a push trailer and a walking floor, all max, mix, matched into one. So the belt there on the floor of the trailer moves but also that big gate so it's kind of pushes out but the belt moves at the same time so whatever load you've got in there isn't being pushed against the, the floor of the trailer it all moves together which is quite a clever idea particularly if you've got heavy wet material in there like grass or maize or something just a quick walk through the chrome stand not as big as I'd expected it to be. Bigger at Lammer in the UK than the uh, than SEMA show, but uh, nevertheless, this is a new machine from Crone. It's a round bale wrapper, so a standalone wrapper for round bales. So that'll be interesting to see that out probably next year. I think they trialled it in the UK this in 22. This is the new cutting system underneath the uh, Easy Collect header. So where previously. The Easy Collectors had a stationary knife and a chain um, powered knife so that the, the knives didn't work at particularly high speed, um, faster than my hands moving there. But uh, these new disc cutting um, system is also um, there to smash the stubble a little bit as well, that's the idea behind it. This is the 1180, which I didn't realise until I looked a bit closer. So that's the 24 litre V12 Libra engine. You can see the massive gearbox there. That's, uh, that's the clutch, which takes the power down to the cylinder. So this is a cross-mounted engine, transverse, transversely mounted. We're going to go with that. Um, so it's mounted across and then the main power is coming off that and going down to the cylinder. This is a, a man truck base but it's a uh, Pesolato chipper so it's got the Epsilon uh, power finger Epsilon crane on the top and this, this is a massive chipper. This will probably take uh, 
two foot logs in there I would imagine and just chip them uh, like balsa wood a uh, huge machine with a massive output as well this is large commercial base machine really um, these were just I don't I'm not I don't recognize this brand but they're, they're big big toppers and mulchers so for crop desiccation and you know potato tops and um, wide area mulching jobs um, big machines I oh, didn't notice that one's got a little filler in there look I don't know what I'm talking about there three point mounted stop moving your hand around you lunatic it's all the way down they've got some quite small machines there some more specialist that looks like a highway maintenance machine got a bit of a bounce on the old camera there didn't we so this is quite a nice bit of kit uh, depending on how you define nice but I like it it's a pinoth um, mulcher shredder I don't even know what horsepower these are I think they're like six to eight hundred horsepower machines um, built like a tank basically uh, you can see there it's just two joysticks for controlling it and then stepping back it's, uh, it's, it's built, built like a tank basically steel tracks and it's got a shredder on the front I would have said that that's quite a small shredder for this machine um, these things are used for, for clearance jobs where they, they basically push trees down and, and shred them to pieces so there it is in action there is a couple of these in the UK I'd love to see one in action if anyone can point me in the right direction, that would be uh, pretty awesome. And over here they've got this chipper. This chipper's got a 400 horsepower engine on it. You can see the size of the engine casing on the back of it. Um, that's that's at the large scale of, of um, those kind of chippers, self-propelled machines. This was another like the like the Alpine tractors at the start of the video these things are, are even more specialized than that these are super super low ground clearance things and these will work on really steep terrain that is that is what they're designed for um, so the one just to the left there with a the mower on there you'll see these things mowing where sheep would fear to tread um, that one's got a coon flail on the front so that's a more um, pitch for you know maintenance jobs uh, there's one with a snow blower this is a little forage wagon little alpine forage wagon um, you can see how it's designed so there's all the weight is kept forward so the pickup is actually at the back so you drive over the swath with the whole machine and it will pick up the grass at the back at the very back of the machine and load it forwards so that you're always uh, keeping maximum weight and on the driving wheels and you can see how low to the ground it is as well um, this you know these sorts of things will work in, in incredibly steep terrain you'll see, you'd see these in Austria and Switzerland and places like that where they're basically harvesting ski slopes in the summertime again that's their uh, tractor this is the one with the mower on so straight cutting mower see a little PTO drive at the front there there it is working in its natural habitat this this machine really caught my eye it's uh, obviously a forestry clearance machine I like the pin off uh, mulcher with the tracks but this is uh, on wheels but uh, look at the state of that arm that it's got on the top this is like Armageddon proof I think so that arm there if you look how far it reaches you can just see I think I swing around in a second yeah there it is so that it goes a massive reach on that so that would be for a saw blade on the end there and uh, that, that's massive clearance machine there. Oh, this is Claydon, so familiar. 
uh, British built machines just had a quick look at these so this has got the um, a mix of legs so it's got the low disturbance um, leg at the front and then a coulter behind with a, with a two tube coulter there so the little boot goes down and splits into two just about to see underneath there and then looking back I don't know what I'm saying there it's the fact that it's spreading and it's the, the seeds split into two rows so you get a wider um, a, a narrower row spacing from wide rows because it's going down two rows this is the hoe that works with the cladon system so basically the, the concept is that you plant your cereals at wider row spacings and then you can follow with a precise guidance system so an RTK system um, and this will follow in between the rows of cereals so that you can do a, a chemical free weed control regime basically that's the idea never seen one in action never seen anyone doing that this is the uh, bednar drill look at the width of that thing huge Right, four distribution heads on the top. Um, conventional sort of um, seed drill, really, cereals drill with disc coulters. You can see the tubes going down into each coulter there. So, a double disc um, coulter opens the ground, seed drops down out of the coulter, closing wheel presses the soil back in on top. And then there's a following hair up the back, which is folded up out of the way there, you can see. But there's a massive piece of kit there. You can see the guide wheels on the outside and then the, the, the main body of the machine um, rides on those tracks. Very impressive piece of kit. Where do we go next? So this is the uh, Gawail, Gawail, depends how you pronounce it. This is a stationary baler, so you've got a massive uh, hopper there, you can tip a load of grass silage, maize, whatever you want into that, whatever fodder you're uh, baling and goes up those up those chains through a bit of processing it doesn't process it too hard it just levels out presents presents an even an even uh, feed to the round baler so it gets up that conveyor belt and then it goes gets fed into the round baler so this has got a belt all the way around the inside so it, even though it's a, a roller baler fixed chamber baler it's got a belt that goes all the way around the inside and then you've got your transmission table so that takes the uh, moves the wrapper into the chamber and then the chamber the, the wrapper will come out of the way so the bale can be wrapped so a lot in, in Europe where you'll see those little alpine tractors working where it's really steep they won't bale a lot of the crops on the field they'll bale it in the yard where it's safe so they're not making rolling weapons to leave on the hillside so they bring the crop in however they harvest it and these, this thing can wrap uh, maize as well so it can make a maize round bale because of the belt system that it's got it's a complete full width belt and this is inside the G1F125 combi baler uh, very very well engineered piece of kit these Gavea balers um, everything seems proper on them um, hydraulic drawbar so that can act as suspension but it can also be um, powered so if you get to a steep gateway where your tractor's got to go up you can lift the hydraulic rams 
or lower them depending on which way you, your tail of your baler is going. This is like the Pottinger round baler, the only, only the two round balers where the knives are above the rotor um, so no grovelling around underneath to get the knives out. It's got this new bale catcher on the, on the back as well so as well as having if you just that's the wrapper so that's the kicker so that kicks the bale onto its end so it doesn't roll away but then they've also added this um, yeah stands the bale up and they've added this arm on the side so that stops the bale from tipping and rolling away if you're on really steep terrain It looked like horse had gone home at this point. All the lights are off and then they came back on. I don't know. Maybe they'd had a big launch or something. Wasn't quite sure. But uh, this is the Avatar drill. Again, see a few of these knocking about in the UK. This one looks like it's got a very large tank on it. No BKT tyres there. Thanks to our sponsors. I wish they were sponsoring the channel. That'd be alright, wouldn't it? Anyway, uh, disc coulters. Um, but unlike the um, Bednar that we just looked at, this has got single disc coulters on, so the disc is on more of an angle, and then you can see the seed pipe comes down in, into the groove that the disc creates, and then you've got a press a depth wheel, the rubber depth wheel on one side, and that um, funny looking pizza tray wheel is on the other side. That's what closes the uh, the, the trench in over the top of the seed. So this is quite a big avatar. This is one of the new Pottinger machines. It's a combination drill, um, semi-mounted, with power harrow element there. Big tank, RSM VT5000 it says. Um, yeah, semi-mounted, big tank, um, power harrow element, and then depth control and transport wheels um, which will also um, compact the ground so after the power harrow has been passed because there's no packer roller on the power harrow so that will com that will just compress the ground enough um, so that the disc coulters on the drill element don't bulldoze uh, this is the Jumbo 8540 this is a massive, massive forage wagon a triaxle forage wagon um, I would beg to ask whether this was uh, going to be legal in the UK. They'll certainly sell them, I should imagine, if somebody wants one, but um, with the weight and size of it, I don't know whether you, you're going to need like a 300 horsepower tractor to pull it. So by the time you've got a 12 ton 300 horsepower tractor and a wagon that probably weighs eight, ten tons empty. I think your load's probably going to be over the top. Um, push you over the 30 ton gross. Anyway, on to Brighton news. This is Pottinger's new uh, machine for this next season. I believe it was tested in 2022 in the UK. There was a couple of test machines knocking around, but this is the uh, live production machine. So this is the belt merger. So there's a few of these offerings around now from different companies, but um, Pottinger I've been uh, waiting a little while to get this one out. There's been rumours about it for a while, but uh, it'd be nice to see that working in the UK. That's one of their mowers with a grouper on the back. Some of their tillage equipment there, just walking past. Another one of these wheeled um, machines. There's just for breaking crust if you get crop sown and then it, it's been capped by the rain or you've got weeds. Here's that sensor that was spinning around above the coon machine. It's the same sensor just in different colours so it's scanning when it's working you see the little lights flickering up there. It's scanning the colour of the crop so depending on how green the crop is is how much fertiliser it needs or doesn't need. So if it's very green and lush and it's thriving it doesn't get as much fertiliser and that's what variable rate is all about, or part of the variable rate system. And so there's the Torreon 1611 wheel loader. It's 
so that's the class in class livery, lever loader, and class colours. It's quite a big machine that. I think it's a six cylinder one. Quadrant baler. Um, here's one of the robot tractors that seems to be out and about a bit. This is the Ag Exceed. So there's this wheeled version, then there's a tracked version as well. The tillage, this would be more your grassland robot. Corsa Zerion, 4200. Huge tractor these days. Concept seems to be surviving well anyway. It's on BF 750-70-44 tyres. So, as mentioned, I'm not the tallest bloke in the world. I could just reach the top of the tyre. That's a hell of a tyre. You're selling that when the tyres are worn out, for sure. Uh, I won't drift onto the Amazon stand, I'll just walk around the class stuff. So this is one of the class quadrant balers. That's a six stringer. All the, all the guards are opened up there so you can see all the way through. It's got road to cut on it or whatever the class call it. So, crop goes up the pickup into this um, auger which brings the crop in from the edge of the pickup into the center, into the rotor. This machine's really wide open so you can see through it brilliantly. Into the rotor, the rotor brings the crop past the knives which stick up from below it and, and the stick up and the knives pass through the, the gaps in the rotor. And then the crop goes into here, which is the pre-packer chamber. So this will pack and pack and pack and pack. And when this is full to the right pressure, because it's adjustable, so when this has got the right amount of crop in it, then it pushes it all the way up into the chamber, which is above. And then you've got the big ram, which packs the crop down into the, it just, just goes back and forth in the crop into the bale at the back and then you've got the knotters up at the top which tie the bale dead easy that's a new round baler and then here we've got the axion um, half track tractor which has got the same Terra track as the combines, although the wheels are slightly different sizes, but the concept is the same. It's just that back wheel is bigger than a combine. Combine has equal wheels. This one's got a bigger wheel at the back, which aids the track cleaning. If the wheels are the same size, the tracks don't get cleaned as well. Um, but if the track is changing its diameter as it goes around the wheel, it cleans the track better. Arion tractors, line of rake. A lot of, um, a lot of the mowers in Europe are straight mowers because they have drier crop, so they tend not to condition it. They want the moisture to stay in the crop, so they have time to work with it. That's the grass header for the class forage harvester, which is right there. Jaguar 970, which has got the six cylinder man engine in. So these things are about 350 to 440 horsepower. 
350 to 400 horsepower. Brute of a tractor, pure arable machine. That. There's the Amazon stand. Lots of drills and plows and sprayers. And um, here's the Agex seed. I think this Cobra cultivator is a new piece of kit. We've got lots of cultivation legs. Yeah. This is the tracked version of the Agex seed. So on, over on the class stand, they've got the wheeled version of this machine. This one's been out in the field. You can see it's been used. So this one has been on all the, the press um, trips and, and showing people what it can do. So this is the, the tillage incarnation of that machine. So it's got tracks on it to enable it to pull more comfortably. So that's the Amazon stand. I'm not going to get too in depth in it because um, without sounding rude to Amazon, there's lots of plows and sprayers and cultivators, of which they do a very good job. Oh, I just had to ask directions off the man. He says, look at the precision drill. So I will look at the precision drill. This is the Amazon precision drill. So in like the Monosem, this drill will precisely plant seeds at whatever spacing you want. See that illustration there? Anyway, here we go. This is the culture. This is the uh, Polaris ATVs and UTV stand. I like this. Look at this. Oh. Polaris Sportsman 1000 with those tracks on. Where couldn't you go with that? It's a bit more of a more sensible one. 70. And the blade. The UTVs are getting ever more popular. I think usually because they've got a cab, to be quite honest. Um, but then over here, they've got one which is this Pro R full on off-road lunatic machine look at the suspension on that I'm gonna wander through the Kemper stands so Kemper uh, Kemper make headers for many other manufacturers um, you can have a Kemper header on any forager you want, if you want it. Um, but usually they're still applied as um, stock standard uh, on John Deere forage harvesters. Here's a crop processor mentioned in, in a previous video. So these are the teeth that smash the kernels to pieces. These run, these two rollers, this closes over and these two rollers run with only a few millimeters of gap at high speed. And you can see the pulley sizes are different. That creates a speed differential between the two rollers, which increases the grinding effect of the processor. Is their grass header. You can fit this grass header on any machine, apparently. So this is the new John Deere 9700i. This is the new chain pickup. So this is like the heavy duty pickup, the 30R. So this is all gearbox driven now. They've increased the size of the auger massively. So that's the old one over there, the Kemper grass header. This is the new version for John Deere. So it's got a massive auger deeper time bands. I would say looking at that six rows of tines um, and then the drive at the back is all done through gearboxes. Can't see it's on this side, it must be on the other side. Let's go and have a look. 
No, you can't see anything. All gearbox drive. Anyway. So this is the very latest 9700i because that is the 18 litre John Deere engine which is stage 5 compliant but with no add blue. That's it right there. Hold on. So that's the machine. 18 litres of displacement but no add blue all through DPF. Don't know how they're getting away with it, but they are. Hello. Yeah, so this is the M series John Deere cab. So the same as the old 30 series, but they freshened it up slightly. Move the display to a corner pillar display. But this is the, the M series cab. It's not a shabby office. So this is the 6R185, so it's got the fancy green mirrors on and the no clocks in front, pillar mounted display and command pro arm, nice. So they've changed this slightly I think but it's got a button here in the front, uh, a rocker switch, um, this uh, toggle, proportional thing, two switches there, two switches there. So that would be for your mid-mount, so you could have, use that as a loader control, front linkage control. You can probably map it to any function you want on the tractor, and then you've got your normal um, command pro lever also. Tractor looks like it's been out and about a little bit. It's got a little bit of grubbiness on it. That's the new 6R cab. This is the 8RX. Hopefully, going to go out and see some of these working soon. It's quite a beast, though. 410 horsepower, four tracks. No front suspension on these tractors, it's all gone through the cab. This is a not brand new concept from John Deere, but it's quite new. I'm not seeing it out working yet. But uh, what you've got is your standard tractor at the front. So this is a tractor transmission. And then on the top of the transmission are two generators. So there's a cutaway over there showing. But the two generators on the top, those two metallic looking objects, generate electricity which is then distributed through this control block here see these massive cables which then go back and the cables go to this uh, transfer unit here so you've got a motor and a gearbox to send the power out to the axles so this is a four-wheel drive um, trailer skid unit. This is the Joskin system, so you can put a trailer slurry tanker on top of this. But where these types of systems have been restricted before is that you'd have to have a tractor with land drive PTO, so the PTO would come out. With this system, you can drive this axle at any amount of power, any speed, it doesn't matter what tyre sizes you've got on your tractor, it won't affect this because it will all intelligently sync up. So this is the combi baler, so beauty of this baler, or well, one of these is a lot of the balers are quite high up, so you can load everything from the floor on this baler. So this has been running continental style, so high hitch point, PTO running underneath, unobstructed, no obstacles in between the two. It's 
spare net wrap and the film is easy to load because the, the film is kept at waist height so it's easy to load. That's the bail kicker, like the Gavail one. Just tips the bail onto its end so it doesn't roll away. Just seeing if the uh, 7R series cab mock-up is still full. Oh yeah. It's rammed. Okay, so just going to quick wander around the John Deere stand here on a bit of time lapse. Um, a lot of products on the stands. Nice to see a big John Deere stand at a show. Not seen that for a long time. Certainly not in the UK anyway. Uh, I know this is in Paris. I haven't forgotten that. Uh, walk around. They had a 6930. I don't know why that was there. 69. It was in excellent condition. It really was in immaculate condition. So here we've got the 6R185. So. Uh, this is going to be a big hit in the UK, definitely. It's the same frame size as 6155R, um, um, but with the power that everybody's been sort of wanting in that frame size, or mapping their tractors to anyway, but they can buy it now. They can buy the 185, so uh, that, I think this is going to be hugely successful. This is the 6R250, so the, the flagship of the 6R range. Uh, boost to 300 horsepower, probably a little bit more. Um, that's the, the the biggest of the 6R range. Just walk backwards into that table and it hurt. Anyway, distracted by shiny tractors. Um, just wander over here in a second and look at the, uh, the the internal wear components for the forage harvesters. So the Duraline components. So. These are the hard wearing uh, components. It costs more money to buy them in the machine, a standard, but they, they last considerably longer. I think like 3,000 hours on things like shoot liners and drum bottoms, which is a massive amount of time for something that's got such abrasive uh, material passing by it. That's the drum bottom or the uh, draft plate as we would call it back in the old days so that's that's got the dura line you can see it's got that scaly finish to it so that's the dura line finish um, so you can get dura line knives um, draft plate shoot components yeah, super hard wearing um, something that John Deere are encouraging people to buy in the machine you know, rather than as replacement parts you can see that's a standard one that's nice and smooth um, that's that's the hard wearing, hard facing. You can see that. There we go. Do you see that? These are the the KPs or kernel processors, corn crackers, however you call it. You can see there that the the gap that's in between these rollers is minuscule considering the volume of crop and the amount. Of power that's going through these things if you think about this in a seven or eight hundred horsepower machine processing maize at you know 10 tons for every 60 or 70 seconds um, going through these these corn crackers they've got different profiles on depending on what job you're doing so if it's cereals you might have a more sawtooth looking processor and then for softer um, crops like maize you would have a straighter tooth these are the different uh, these are the more extreme rollers so they've got slightly different profiles again but it does the same the same job it's the same unit basically but a more heavy duty um, that's like a I shouldn't compare but a shred ledge roller where they try and maintain a long fibrous material in the leaves but uh, anyway this is the X9 Combine, huge twin rotor, rotary machine. These, these are the uh, massive output John Deere Combines. And you could see, when I was standing up on top of the, the stand, you could see the header on the front of this thing with the big um, flexed. You can see it's there, the, the sides of the header are dipping down. Um, but uh, these are the flagship John Deere machines. So you can see there's the illustration. 
quite short the showing is there yeah it's got a chop straw chopper brilliant well done yeah you can put it in a swath too good top work and adjustable straw chopper good yeah nice handy come on come on come on get to the point right okay we're off um, just the last little bit of time lapse here walking through the show um, around the class stand well I thoroughly enjoyed my visit to SEMA I hope people have liked my videos and so if you do like give them a like if you want to know anything ask in the comments but uh, above all please subscribe to my channel thank you very much